So we're going to start with the background. I have a rough sketch now. You'll see that we're just putting some purple down. Basically a lot of this is going to get covered later. Um, one of the most important things I've told many people that paint with me is to keep that brush moving. Don't stay in one place. Keep a variation in the color. On the other side, I'm going to come in with some blue. And the same thing. You see how the brush just continuously moves. Don't try to outline something like you're using a Sharpie marker. Use the brush. Let the brush do the work for you. You'll see when I get around this comb of this rooster here, that I just kind of lay the brush in there. It doesn't matter if you cross the line or not. It's not a coloring book. Get in there. Keep, you make sure you're using plenty of paint. The acrylics will mix best when they're wet. If they start to get a little sticky, you can always dip your brush in water. I like to make a lot of mess. Everybody that's ever painted with me knows that I like lots of brush strokes. And I'm using a one inch brush on this. Um, be sure when you're doing this, you'll paint the sides, the top as you're going along. Um, I use a lot of those little X motions like you just seen. Go around, just keep the brush moving. Constantly keep the brush moving. The main thing is to get the background filled in. It doesn't matter if we cross into the subject matter. This happened to be a crazy chicken that we're doing. A lot of people ask me for a how-to video, so this is my first one. I'm hoping to get better at it. Uh, I can paint, but I'm not really a techie type of guy, but how hard can it be? I'm using my kids' PlayStation 4 equipment to do this, so you know, as you can tell by the video, probably. So we almost got the background all the way filled in. Um, <clears throat> When I get down to the bottom here, you'll see me getting darker and darker. I like to have a light to a dark. Um, always have a light to a dark in what you're painting. Otherwise, the painting just looks flat. So we're going to just do some more work right there. And now we're coming in with the first, the first layer of red. Now, if you notice, it's not perfect. Uh, where we went around the brush stroke, brush around that comb, you might pick up a little bit of that blue. It doesn't matter. Keep painting. The colors being mixed together a little bit, it's not going to hurt your painting. Um, you see, it, it's, you use wide brush strokes. Be fast. Be confident in what you're doing. There we go. Get a little bit of red right there. Uh, what do I want to do next? Hmm. Yeah, that's good. So this is still just a base of red. Um, doing the, I don't know what's that called, a gobble? I don't know what it's called. I'm not a farm person. So, <clears throat> and we're gonna put a little red around the eyes and this is just to kind of hold our place. You know, the thing about painting is people always seem to be afraid to cross a line or if they go over something, they're not gonna be able to see it and blah, blah, blah. Man, relax, have fun make a mess so this black that I'm putting down here this is all an underpainting I need that because I'm gonna stack some colors on top of that later and it's gonna give me a little bit of depth now I'm gonna come back in a minute and I'm gonna add some white in some areas and that's just because having that flat black is boring so when I get most of this in I'll come in and you'll see me putting in some white strokes inside of this and that's to keep just a little variation you know just something uh, exciting uh, later on, we're going to have a whole lot of chaos in there. And this is all still our first layer of paint. And everybody's so afraid of making a mistake in this first layer. Make a mistake. You're going to paint over it anyway. It's the most forgiving medium you can use. Don't like it? Let it dry. Paint over the top of it. You'll never see it. All right. So I think I'm ready for some white. Here we go. Yeah. See how that? I, I put that down? I leave it. Just leave it. Just move along. Go. Just build up on it. Have fun. Everybody says, oh, you know, I paint, I want to paint to relax. And they pick up a paintbrush and they're not relaxed. It's all in your mind. Just relax. So I told you light to dark. So the head is going to be lighter. So I've mixed a little bit of white into a little bit of black. I picked up 
some of the red it's still wet by mistake you see that you see how I kept on moving just keep on painting keep on painting inside of there it doesn't matter if you pick that up or not like I said this is your first layers once we get all of these layers in we allow for dry time and then we come back and we stack our other colors on top of it so next I'm going to start on the beak um, using a little bit of yellow and red together uh, using one color out of a tube just straight out the tube not a whole lot of fun uh, you want I like to see a little brush stroke in there so we're gonna go ahead and fill the black in on the eyes those of you that are trying to follow along on this and paint by numbers so to speak um, I paint fast I'll try to slow these videos down later on as I get better at making them um, can't help the fact that my big fat arm keeps getting in the way again it'll get better in time so I see that I have mostly everything on there. I'm gonna come in and I'm just kind of anywhere that I've seen that I might need to add something or fill in some area uh, so that I don't have really hard sharp, hard, sharp edges. I just come back and kind of do a dry brush over it maybe with some white and some black or just some white as you can see up on that right corner of the face. There we go, you see how that white just kind of breaks it up a little bit. And this is, this is so that we don't have a hard line. Um, it's supposed to be feathery, but it's also like the dude needs coffee. You know, he's just woke up and needs some coffee too early in the morning. Everybody knows about needing the coffee early in the morning. I need it all day long. So, all right. So we're adding a little red and white mixture into that comb on the top. Now, you're beginning to paint smaller. Those areas, we're not covering everything. You have to trust that the brush stroke is going to make the impression and make the viewer see that that's the light side or the dark side you know you don't want it to be perfect if you're looking for photorealistic type paintings i'm probably not the artist for you i like things to be crazy and fun so let's see what are we going to do next all right there we go start darkening up around that eye just a little bit all this comes together towards the end. I always tell people that paint with me, give me about an hour and a half before you decide if you like your painting or not. So now we're going to start lightening up on the left side. Um, just kind of, you see how those brush strokes towards the bottom in there are just left there. You just leave them. You have to have faith. A lot of people look at these paintings and they're oh man, that looks great. I love it. But when it comes to trying to be chaotic and be spontaneous, they're too tight, too OCD. Um, so if you can see, I'm pulling those brush strokes out. And when you bring the brush out, you kick it. You can't really tell because my hand's in the way, but you kick the brush away from what you're painting. And it gives you that little furry effect. In this case, feathers. Fur, feathers. It's all the same thing. There's a lot of videos on how to paint this and how to paint that. There should just be a video on how to paint. Once you learn how to paint, it doesn't matter what you want to paint. It's all done the same way. You learn your style, your techniques that work for you. That's a good point right here for me to show you that I'm kicking that brush out. I'm kicking it away from the painting. Notice that I'm not going back over that area again and again and again and again. That's how you kill the painting. It doesn't look alive. All right. I think I need to maybe work on this area here and kind of darken that just a little bit. There we go. Now. Bring some lights around the eyes so that he has that wild hair. Okay, looking good, looking good. Mm, what do I want to do next? Uh, play with this just a little bit right here. Giving it just a little more shape. I kind of got, I kind of carried the white over into it too much. And that's one of the things that I was saying, don't be afraid to cross the line because I just painted back over the top of it and got my shape back. So, all right, there we go. Just a little spot, give us some eyes. Give us something to look at while we paint. You see how those two little spots just quick, I mean, less than a second, and we got some eyes to look at. Go ahead and brighten up the left side of this some more. Starting to take shape. Starting to like what I see. Look, you see how we're just tapping here, just tapping it a little bit to give it some texture. 
we don't we're not painting it so much now we're just tapping giving it some texture staying loose if we cross like i just crossed that eye you see that it's okay leave it alone don't panic don't be so tight when you paint use a big brush paint have fun okay getting in here a little bit a little bit in there so my first layer had a little black <clears throat> sorry and a little white in it um, this time I'm using more white do you see how I'm still using I can still see that grayish color underneath now we're going to shape the nose a little bit I'm just using a little yellow and white I'm gonna come back and shape it in case I didn't get uh, in case I crossed it anywhere uh, I want to have a good shape I'm gonna darken it on this side I'm using a little yellow and red and we're just gonna kind of touch that up just a little bit there we go yeah so get some light going on this side using yellow and white on this side there we go in a minute later on i'm going to put a really big yellow and white right in this area but we'll get there all right so doing the same thing the yellow and the red inside of the little gobble area here quick strokes guys quick strokes let the brush let the brush stroke speak for you um, you should be able to tell your viewer what you're trying to get across to them in as few strokes as possible so oh. okay so we're gonna do a little bit of drying here let that dry come back there we go all right so I'm getting ready to take this to the next level there we go and what I'm trying to do now is get this little comb going a little bit more and I'm using a little black mixed in with some red and you notice how I'm staying on the right side of everything now I'm bringing that down to his face I'm gonna do the same thing in the little gobble as well just some quick little strokes inside of there okay clean this up just a little bit right there yeah it's definitely got to find a different way of filming this so that you can see what I'm doing without my hand out of the way so what I did there is I just brought some red around the eyes and you notice that those paint those brush strokes aren't perfect and that's one of the beauties of it making it just look chaotic but it makes sense at the same time and put a little light on this side um, I want to put a hard highlight at the bottom of this beak, like a bunch of yellow and white. Let's see here. There we go. Yeah. See how that just completely changed it. Now, at that point, you don't want to go back down there and just keep messing with that. You know, leave it. Leave that alone. It brings it to life. All right. So we're going to do a little bit of a feathering here. I'm taking some white and I'm just kind of feathering it out. You see how it's going across? the outer line i'm going outside of the face just a little bit with these um, this round brush and quick brush strokes i always tell my people that are painting with me the slower that you do this the worse it'll look if you'll just go really fast with it it's going to look great look at that left side compared to the right side you see how it's starting to look like a little bit of chaotic feathers everywhere and the right side looks kind of constipated it's just there you know you can see the two so we're going to go back into this right side too and clean it up as well um, holding the brush at the very back so that you have very little control over it and let the brush do the work for you and it'll come out amazing every time okay all right oh can't wait to get down here and make some crazy strokes in the body uh, real chaotic kind of the calligraphy of it all um, so as you can see you just keep on moving that around just playing around a little bit there we go now let's do some chaotic there we go yes right there oh see that see a little chaos just take the brush and go oh, like that okay there we go that's it that's it all right now we're getting closer to the fun stuff um i like it towards the end because you already have everything there so unless you just really, really stepped way out of line, your painting is going to look right. Because it's already there. Look, we already have everything there. So I want some different variations going on in this face. So I'm going to put a light blue down right now. 
just real quick around these eyes and then later on I'm going to come back with some dark blue. So now I'm going to have all these layers of colors. We had gray, we had white, we're having this light baby blue looking color going on here and then in a minute we're going to put some dark blue in on top of that. And then we have, it gives us depth, layers upon layers upon layers, uh, gives us some depth here. Yeah, take some of that same blue, get down here and make mess. Okay. Because we want everything to blend together and put a little green, a little green. I like this green, a little lime green. Get down here, look, look right here. There you go, look. Just go in there, do that. Do it right there. Yes, put that mark. Good. All right, good. Yeah. Okay, so we need some more coffee. Okay, there we go. Just making a mess, making a mess. You see that? Making a mess. But it's a good looking mess. Okay, there we go. Now put some highlights in. Highlights are important, but people tend to take out all that paint after they put it. And that's what makes the highlight important. So now we're going to come back with this blue. So a while ago with the light blue, my strokes were bigger. Now my strokes are getting smaller. So there we go. Little smaller strokes. And it just kind of adds some, there we go, some dimension to what we got going on. There we go. Good, good. We're going to take some of the same dark blue and off of that comb I'm going to come in and just make some chaos. Remember the chaos that we made in the body? We're doing the same thing. Just some squiggly marks. Just think of some squiggly marks. Don't try to think of the, where the one line is going to end at. It makes it too stiff. Just put the brush up there and just wiggle it. You know, enjoy it. Have fun. I, you've heard me say that so many times in this short little video. Have fun. This is what painting is all about. Um, don't put, don't put such big, um, I don't know what that word I'm looking for is. You expect it to be perfect from the beginning to the end. If you expect a painting to be perfect from the beginning to the end, you're already talking yourself out of it. It's, it evolves as it goes on. Okay. There we go. Good. So I'm almost done with this one, I think. And... I don't know, I might play a little bit more up here, giving a little bit more definition. And that's gonna be about it right there. Um, basically at this point I come back and I look and say, okay, so does it need to be a little stronger highlight here? Does it need to be a little darker here? And I'm just kind of looking at the painting. One of the main things to do is step away from the painting. Look at it from a distance. Um, you can see that mine's on an easel and I usually paint everything this way so i hope that you've enjoyed this video like i said leave me some comments let's see if we can get them to look better in the future all right thank you for watching